So here I have a simple roller coaster. Now, if I hit start, what you're supposed to do is make some observations about the kinetic energy, mechanical energy, and potential energy. By default, this is set up to where there's no friction, no drag, anything like that. When I hit start, the coaster will go through my little uh, roller coaster um, track that I made. But I want to turn on the velocity vector and the force vectors at first. And so I'm going to hit start and then I'm going to pause. So now right here, notice that the potential energy, which was originally up here, has decreased and the kinetic energy has increased. And so I'm going to reset that and we're going to do one little step at a time. By clicking on it one step at a time, I'm just clicking the step button, we see that the, as the potential energy decreases, the kinetic energy increases. And if you add the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, what does it equal? Mechanical, Mechanical energy. Okay. And so if I hit start, right here at the bottom of the hill, the potential energy is very low. The kinetic energy is very high. And so if I continue, watch what happens as we get at the top of the hill. Mostly potential again. So the other observation is I'm going to just let this thing kind of play out. It'll bounce back and forth. Notice the weight due to gravity. The acceleration is constant. The mass is constant. Weight is mass times the gravitational acceleration g. The vector for weight never changes never. It always points straight down and it's the same magnitude. The normal force is what keeps the cart on the track. So as we get to the top of the hill, notice that the normal force increases and decreases. So at the bottom of the hill, the normal force is the highest. This is the normal force. The reason for that is is that this cart has built up momentum and now it's abruptly changing direction. So it is pushing down on that track really hard and the track has to push back against the cart otherwise the cart will break the track which is why the normal force is so high. Now, as we get to the top of the hill the normal force has to push down. Why? Because the cart literally wants to jump off of the track. Okay. So observe that, and then lastly, watch the velocity vector. It is always parallel to the track, but it's always in a straight path. So right now, at that particular time, it's like the slope of the curve at that particular time. It's parallel to the track exactly where the car is. Which is why when we do a loop, this is what keeps it on the track. Because as we enter a loop, watch what happens with the velocity vector. Which way does that cart want to go? It wants to go up. Which way is the track pushing against the cart? Down. So when we get to the top, what is the normal force? It's almost nothing, right? Because the velocity, the cart wants to keep going in this direction and the track is redirecting it. So the cart is literally pushing down on the track, which is why we are able to go upside down on a loop. Okay. Are there any questions mentioned um, or any questions you have that I didn't mention in the reflection? No. Okay, so that's basically it. One last thing that I want to show you guys is that when we go to do this uh, same type of deal as before where we have like these hills here. I'm going to make this kind of a high hill. I've, I, all these examples that I've shown you, there's absolutely no frictional force. So now if I click here, now I'm going to have friction. So watch the mechanical energy as we have friction. Watch the potential and the kinetic energy. Right about there, they're almost half and half. 
What do you notice about the mechanical energy as I let this roller coaster go? It's going down due to non-conservative forces like friction. So the energy of the system is being used up by friction and heat. Now, will it make it over that first hill? What do you think? Nope. Nope. See, the kinetic energy plus the potential energy has to equal the mechanical energy, and the mechanical energy, because of drag, isn't high enough. So if I hit start, does it make it over the first hill? Now, if I turn that off, oh, yeah, it'll make it. Well, i got to start over, actually. Oh, it'll make it all day long because it doesn't lose anything. The mechanical energy never changes. Okay? So if I restart it and I put the drag on, it won't make it. Okay? It will not make it. So what we need to do, let me turn that off. Got a little error message there. Oh, I want to turn that off. Okay. Um, what we need to do is when we design our roller coaster, we need to keep, take that into consideration. So this is how real, I mean, they don't do it with a computer like this. They do it mathematically, but the, this wouldn't work if we didn't know the equations. This program is based on the equations that you guys learned in class. So if I, if I lower that hill a little bit, I have enough kinetic energy to keep the roller coaster moving over the hill because the kinetic energy plus the potential energy is equal to the mechanical energy, and I didn't lose that much, so I still have kinetic energy. Will I have enough to make that second hill? Oh, uh, yeah, barely. Okay. Okay, that's it.